The following is an excerpt from a lecture given by Professor Sheila Widnall at MIT in the fall of 2005. Professor Widnall will discuss the Columbia shuttle accident. A former secretary of the Air Force, she also served on the Columbia Accident Investigation Board. But let me talk a little bit about the temperatures involved. Um, we're talking about re-entry of a damaged vehicle at Mach 25. But roughly speaking, if the gas didn't dissociate, uh, the temperatures on re-entry at the leading edge of this vehicle would be about 50,000 degrees Fahrenheit, which is really pretty hot. Um, the fact that the gas does dissociate, ionization at this Mach number is not that important. It interferes with the radio signals, but it does not, in fact, absorb a lot of energy. The gas is slightly ionized, 1%, something like that, 2%, but not enough to, to be a big energy issue. But the dissociation of oxygen, dissociation of nitrogen is an extremely important phenomena. And because of that, the gas temperature is roughly 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit, which is a lot better than 50,000 degrees Fahrenheit. So that makes a big difference. But let's talk about the leading edge material. The leading edge material is, in fact, an incredible material. It's a carbon-carbon composite material. It's about a quarter of an inch thick. And it can withstand a temperature of 3,200 degrees Fahrenheit. And that was what? The shuttle was conceived in, you know, what, what are we talking about here? 70? Yeah, 69. Right. 70. We don't have much better materials today. You know, we might be able to go to 3,400 degrees Fahrenheit instead of 3,200 degrees Fahrenheit. So, you know, we've made some progress. But this is a, a marvelous material. Now, how in the world, with a gas temperature of 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit, can you use a material of 3,200 degrees Fahrenheit? Well, that's the other part that I try to avoid as a graduate student. It's called radiation. And what is it? The Stefan Boltzmann law of radiation, T to the fourth. And, and you can write it down on the back of an envelope and you can calculate it. And it turns out that the gas coming in uh, does heat the leading edge up, but then the leading edge radiates out the right amount of energy to basically have an equilibrium temperature of the order of magnitude of, say, 2,800 degrees or maybe 3,000 degrees. So it's comfortably below its maximum temperature. Uh, but this is obviously a very dangerous situation. If you have a good, solid, continuous leading edge, you can support a temperature of 3,200 degrees because of radiation. But if you get a hole in that leading edge, then the gas that goes into the cavity behind the leading edge is your old friend 10,000 degrees. But there is no radiation balance to bring you back down to 3,200 degrees. So you have a 10,000, 7 to 10,000 degree arc jet coming through any major size hole in the leading edge of the shuttle. And that's, of course, exactly what happened. remind people that 10,000 degrees is the surface temperature of the sun. Oh, it's very hot, yes. Yeah. There is no material that will withstand this. Uh, this is... Uh, and this happens, and you happen, I mean, this happens routinely in shuttle operations. It's the, the shuttle re-enters at Mach 25, and the temperatures of the gas surrounding the shuttle are about 10,000 degrees. And we've successfully gone through how many shuttle flights? Uh, in total? In total. 114. 114, so. 